Right, welcome to Real Talk with Obi. I am here with. Um, <laughs> well, can we rewind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rewind and just say boogie. Right, right, right. So, welcome here uh, to uh, Real Talk with Obi. Uh, we're here with. I'm here with Boogie. Uh, we've been talking off camera. Man, bro, you survived something that you know not many people, you know, have been lucky enough to, you know. Um, to, to escape and, 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 and live through to, to tell their own story, especially here in Colombia. You were a victim of an attempted kidnapping. Um, can you just let me know, tell us, tell us what happened. You're right, I, I'm very lucky, but probably very stupid as well. Uh, to give it some context, I've been coming here for six years for extended trips. So last time I was here for three months. So familiar with the risks of the country and I feel like I'm fairly aware um, person and not completely stupid, but I, I definitely made some bad decisions uh, a few weeks ago. I met a girl. It's always about a girl, right? A very pretty girl in Provenza. She didn't approach me. I approached her. I asked a, a gringo who lived here, like if he thought she was working, because I was trying to stay away from a working girl. All right, so, let, so sorry just to interrupt you, and I know the guys are going to be like, let the man speak. It's all good. Honestly speaking, were you looking for a working girl or you? No, that was the whole point. I was, I've been trying to meet organically, Tinder, Bumble, like to meet a real girl for like a relationship kind of deal. So I meet this girl. I, I approach her. I talk to her. She's got good English. She's really cute, beautiful, pretty, hot, everything. Uh, tattoos. Uh, she says she's waiting for a friend. And this is outside Vin Trash on Carrera, Strangey Cinco, so it's very popular tourists, loads of gringos. I got a gringo Tuesday uh, at Vin Trash, which is sort of near where she was. Uh, we go for one beer, conversation. She likes coffee in the gym and this kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it was just, she spoke good English and it was, it felt like there was chemistry. So you, you met her that day and then you went to the, to have some coffee on the same day. And this was the night before on the Tuesday. Right. We had one beer and uh, I offered to walk into an Uber and she said, oh, do you mind if I hold your arm? These sh shoes are high, like the heels are high. I put my hand out and she's like, oh, I don't want to hold your hand because it's too familiar. And I was like, oh, that's like really sweet. <laughs> we both said we like this Pergamino coffee shop. We agreed to meet there the next day. I was going to work remote. Uh, she shows up with a really cute French bulldog. Uh, I can't this was the next day, right? This was the next day, the like 12 o'clock in the day. Daytime, all good. Uh, so there'd be no talk of sex or drugs or anything. It was all seemed to me very like above board. And I was like, well, look, I'm going to this MMA gym. Do you want to come? She said, sure. I just need to drop my dog and change my clothes. Right. So where was the MMA gym? Where was it? Was it based around? It's like... Uh, five minutes from Santa Fe Mall. Like, right. So we're in Provenza. That's like a 10 minute Uber away. Okay. And there was nothing about her look, which looked uh, suspicious. She didn't, you know, she didn't give you any like, you know, weird vibes or anything like that. Okay. So one of the guys, I posted on Reddit just to make people aware. So, you know, like at least there can be some benefits. Someone can learn from my story. Uh, and one dude said, oh, the fingernails. And I was like, well, I live in the Caribbean. Like, girls of all races are rocking, like, crazy nails. Like, to me, that's not a big deal. Right, so what kind of nails did she have? They didn't look like anything. They were not too long. They were kind of nice, I thought. She said she's a nail technician. It makes sense. She's going to have good nails. Right. Uh, she said she liked coffee. But then when we were drinking the coffee, she was like, oh, do you want to finish mine? Which minor thing is, like, if you like coffee, you're not going to half drink your coffee. We, in the, uh, we go to get a taxi, I go to order an Uber, so I get her address, so I know where we're going. And I, I look on the map to make sure it's a good area. I see it's in Berlin, I got friends who live in Berlin, I know there's some dodgy parts of Berlin, but for the most part, it's all right. Uh, so what happened then? Um, yeah, so as I put the address in the Uber, and I, sh I don't know what I did, I showed it to her or something, and she's like, oh, that's going to take too long, let's just get a taxi. I was like... Cool. Which was definitely a mistake. Right. Don't get into like always book your own. So, so I just want to ask a question, right? 
at the point where she said, like, let's get the taxi, when she was with you in the coffee shop, did at any point was she on her phone texting or doing anything like that, texting somebody or acting weird? Or did she say, listen, I've got to go off and make a phone call or something like that? Anything like that that you no, didn't pick up? No, there was nothing, nothing really triggered then. Mm. It, was, it was when she said, let's get the taxi. Like, I know that's not the right thing to do, but I didn't really care because I still wasn't, nothing was triggering then. When we were in the taxi, maybe it seemed like she didn't know where she was going. And she was a bit quiet and she said she felt sick from the coffee, but she had no food, which I know that happens. Like, it's happened to me. So, like, it's kind of, there was a weird different vibe, but it didn't seem anything that bad. But just because I'm trying to always be, you know, thinking ahead and careful, I already texted my location to two groups of friends. I had a bunch of friends here for my birthday. So, and I had another friend or a couple of friends who were still in the country. So, uh, it's like, you know. Better safe than sorry, right? As we're, as we're pulling up, I see really nice buildings, like expensive apartments. I'm like, oh, cool, we're going to one of these. You know, there'll be security, it's all good. Uh, somewhere along that way, I just had the presence of mind to have like a tactical Supreme pen. So it's like a sharp, pointy metal pen. Uh, and I took that out of my bag and put it into my pocket. Uh, this is another stupid thing I did. Like uh, I would work remote and go to the coffee shop and back home again, but I would never go anywhere else with my expensive laptop and all my shit. So I had a, like more stuff than I should be walking around in Colombia with. And I, and I know that. So that was a mistake. Getting her taxi was a mistake. So we, we rocked up to the crib and it's not one of these nice buildings, but the street is okay. There's people in the street. There's like a hamburger shop across the road, guys sitting outside. We pull up to a, I guess, well, a low rise, like a two story apartment gated the keys under the mat and I'm like that's really secure isn't it she said her it was her aunt's place her aunt worked in real estate I was like oh maybe you know she has multiple places she opens the door she walks in she's like oh can you close the door and I'm look at the place it looks like a like a clean Airbnb still like not so, really. So it looked. It, it look, did it look really? Clear? Did it have any furniture in there? Did, like it was like a, a proper Airbnb. Like right. Furniture. Okay. So did it look like someone was living in there? It didn't look that lived in. No. It looked like, like you know how they put a. It, it looked like a trap house, like a place. Where... Well, it didn't look like a trap house, but it definitely was a trap house because I was trying to remember how it happened in my head because I like, I think I got a little bit confused. I got hit in the head quite a few times. So. Uh, we walked into the front door and there was like the living area and stairs coming down. And then there was like the dining table with chairs and then a kitchen in the next room. I took my bag off and put it on the first chair. Like I must have closed the door, put my bag down. And then right away, I guess they were upstairs. They just had come down the stairs and two guys pop out. We're here in the hospital. I think I got shot. Maybe three or four times. I think it was just glancing wounds, but I got pistol whipped a few times. Uh, I stupidly fought the two guys, but they wanted to take me up. And there was no way I was going to let that happen. They were going to have to shoot me if they wanted to take me. We walked into the front door, and there was like the living area and stairs coming down. And then there was like the dining table with chairs and then a kitchen in the next room. I took my bag off and put it on the first chair. Like I must have closed the door, put my bag down. And then right away, I guess they were upstairs. They just had come down the stairs and two guys pop out. What, what, what did these guys look like? Do you remember? Colombians with like shitty COVID masks on. Both with shiny guns. Both? Yeah, both pointing them at my head. One taller, bigger, one skinnier. So. Just sorry to cut you. So at that moment when you saw those two shiny guns, how big were these guys, first of all? Because you're, you're a pretty tall guy. You're a big I'm guy. I'm 6'2", yeah, like 250 yeah, yeah. pounds. You're almost as tall. You're as tall as me, right? Uh, so when you saw these two guys, how tall were they? Or I mean, they they're smaller than me. All smaller Colombians than are smaller than us, right? right. right. Like, okay. So you have these two guys, right? They've got their uh, uh, facial mask on the, from the COVID-19 thing. Right. And then they've got their two shiny guns pointing at your face. 
what was going through your mind? Kind of like, you know. Yeah, point it sideways, kind of. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. I mean, I immediately realized I fucked up, but because I think I was subconsciously preparing for it, I wasn't that surprised. I was like, oh yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Like, you know not to do all the things you just did because this can happen. The first time you've ever done it in your life, the first time in six years, Colombia, is exactly what everyone told you it is. Like, so when, when, when you're standing there and you see these two guys approaching with two shiny guns, um, you obviously, one of the thoughts in your head was that you fucked up. 100%. Right. What was the next thing that came into your mind? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot, to be honest. Um, I just knew I didn't want to be there. <laughs> and they had a reel of duct tape. And I can't remember if they said it in English or I, I definitely understood their intention without knowing what was said because they were pointing to the ground, I think saying, get down. Okay, and at this point, where was the girl that you, you came into the- She so walked into the kitchen. I was in the dining room. They were blocking the living room, which then had the entrance to the door to get out. Okay, so while all that was happening, did you ever have any further eye contact with the girl when she before she walked into the kitchen? No, pretty much. She walked to the kitchen. I put my bag down. And the guys popped out, and I just forgot about her existing. Like I didn't. I was just totally focused on these two motherfuckers with guns at my head. Right, and then so they, what did they do next? They they pointed, get down or whatever. Yeah, and I think pretty quickly. I didn't. They didn't get what they wanted. I think they were probably, you know, relying on the shock effect or something. I think, I know I had some cash in my pocket. I didn't even have that much cash in me, but I just like, grabbed my cash, threw it at them, was like, trying to chill them out, tranquilo amigos. I was trying to, obviously I got a bit of adrenaline going on, but I was trying to remember enough Spanish to say that I'd sent my location to my friends. I'm like, uh, mi amigos, sabes mi dirección. So like my friends, know my address like and, and what was their reaction when you said all of that stuff i mean i think maybe they were just either fucking scared or inexperienced because they were very focused on just like intimidation get on the ground so i think right away that's when they both came and started like attacking me and pistol whipped me in the cheek in the head which this like started bleeding a lot like right away so i uh I took my shirt off to wrap my head so I, worked, so I could, could I actually see because there was so much blood. And then it's a bit of a blur, but... Uh, so at this, at this point, when they start pistol whipping you um, and all the blood is gushing down from your head, um, did you, at any point, did you think this is it? Like, did you think that, you know, I'm resisting? Because obviously you were resisting at that point. If they pistol whipped you, you weren't following the instructions, right? right? That's it. Like, right? So, sorry to cut you off. No, so, no, you're right. So did, did you, you think, think at that point, point okay, okay, if, if I, I resist, resist further, they're, they're going to do me in. in? The main focus on my head was I could tell they wanted to tie me up with duct tape. And I'd literally rather die than that happen. Why? I mean, the thought of torture and just lack of power, um, I don't consider myself a submissive person. So it's like, I, I, I've thought about this in the past and thought that's probably like the greatest fear, like you go drowning or sharks, whatever the fuck it is. I think just like, yeah, tortured hostile style is like the worst thing I can think of ever happening. So like, as, as, as I said in a, 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 um, a little documentary that I did, some of these guys, they kidnap people over here to do, uh, uh, Paseo Milonario, that's where they take you, they keep you for a couple of days, they have your ATM card or your credit cards, and then every day they're taking money, you know, from, from your account, using your, your cards and stuff. What do you, or in some un unlucky instances, you could actually be held for ransom. What do you think their intentions were? I mean, it was obviously financial. I, I would have assumed that the minimum they would be taking my cards to get money out. What I've heard of other guys where they've drained their crypto accounts. So I got my phone on me, which I think I had biometrics enabled at the time. I've got my laptop on me. So I, I literally have everything I need for my banking, but also I could fuck with it and make sure they couldn't get it. 
would that have frustrated them more that situation i don't really ever want to find out like it could have been yeah they're just getting my cards or they could be getting all the money from my bank i, I really didn't know or care it's just i couldn't face the thought of being fucking duct taped by these dudes right so at that point when you were blo uh, you know blood is gushing down your head you're resisting and then they come in they're striking on your head at which point did you decide that you know um they're not going to take me like they're going to have to and at which point did it turn from them bashing you on the head to the actual gunshots going off i mean it was pretty much right away from them pulling guns out i was like well i'm gonna do whatever i can to control the situation to make my best outcome so when they were coming in with guns and stuff I was basically trying to control the guns because I didn't want the guns pointing at my head. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of scuffling. There was a lot of hits back and forth. And, uh, like, guy lost his gun. I think the first time the guy hit me on the head, his mag came out. Then he must have shot at me somewhere in between, like, maybe six plus times. But it was the big guy doing the shooting. Every time he shot, he had to cock the gun. So they looked like good guns, but maybe they were shitty guns. Uh, the little guy was like super aggressive. He was like the fighter. And I don't think he shot at all. So maybe his gun didn't work. I don't know. So where did you get hit? So we were scuffling back and forth. And I keep trying to remember how it happened because it was a bit of a blur. And it could have been 10, 15 minutes. It was basically I text my friend at one saying, I'm with this girl. I'm going to this live location. And then half an hour later, I text in the video that you saw. Uh, so I'm, I'm in the back. We're in the, I'm in the dining room. I'm like, trying to have the corner between me, trying to keep one guy in front of me to like, minimize like, attacks. And I just remember the big guy coming up and like, shooting at the ground near my feet. And it went like, so loud. Like, we all just kind of stopped. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. Tranquilo, tranquilo, tranquilo. And they both just stopped. And again, they were like, Get on the ground, get on the ground. I was like, no, no, no. What, what is it about you? Why weren't you scared? Mo most people would just freeze up. What is, w why didn't you freeze up? I mean, if I, I, I'm a big guy, right? If I heard, if someone shot up my feet, I'm going down. I'm, I'm doing what they want. Because to me, that's serious intention. Yeah. So, so w w why are you like this? Like, why, <laughs> you, you know, yeah. like, some people watching this would just say, you know, without being offensive, that, you know, it's, it's, it was dumb. I mean, yeah, definitely. Because cause this, this could have easily been, you know, turned out I different. I would yeah. agree. It could have gone so wrong so many different ways. I'm very lucky, very, very lucky, very dumb. I think uh, having some kind of preparedness for situations like this sort of helps. Like, uh, helps. Uh, I've never been a fighter. I never really got into fights. I mean, maybe remember a couple of fights in high school where I got punched in the mouth. I didn't win those fights. Uh, and I guess I always had like one of those um, powerless dreams as a kid, like I'm punching, but it's like nothing. Like you can't even feel your hands, you know? And in my head, I kind of forget I'm like a big, heavy dude covered in tattoos. So people have a different impression of me that I have of myself. But as a teenager, I did Kung Fu. And then when I was living in London, I did a bit of kickboxing and then I moved to the Cayman Islands and then discovered jiu-jitsu and really got into jiu-jitsu and so we're talking maybe eight years ago and uh, my trainer turned me on to uh, Floyd Moxon Fight Factory, turned me on to Joe Rogan and his comedy and the stoner and just, you know, all that kind of shit clicked and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to get really good at jiu-jitsu. I want to compete and cool. I've got, I like a broken up from a really toxic relationship. So I was unfit and overweight and everything. So I wanted to like, you know, okay. change my life. So uh, after the situation where they shot at you and you're refusing and there's this whole scuffle, you know, how did they finally, you know, what happened up to the point that they just said, you know what, fuck it. I'm not going to bother doing this stuff. And then they just left you alone. I mean, I, ask me that again one sec, because I don't think I finished my full Go thought on. On, your, on your last question. So. I never knew I had it in me to, I never knew I would react like that. And I think a lot of us don't know. And I think, you know, you cannot be prepared for something, but you might be, it reacts really aggressively. It's the basic fight or flight, right? But 
I didn't have any flight. I didn't have any option for flight. So I wasn't consciously scared. I wasn't consciously brave. I was just literally reacting in the moment for what I thought was my best interest. And so I, I would hope maybe from a few years of, you know, martial arts, jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, having enough, being punched in the head enough times over the years. And I'm not, I don't think I'm very good at it and I don't spar enough. Like all my friends are way better than me, but I think it helps a little bit. Like I would always recommend for everyone to train their kids in jiu-jitsu just so there's that level of respect for violence so you don't become a violent person because most martial arts I know, like the most chill, fun people, they never start shit because they know how it can end up. Um, but I'd never been really tested before. Yeah. Well, you were tested. That I day. mean, <laughs> I was surprised myself, to be honest. And a few people are giving me some funny nicknames like Kai Wick and shit like that. And <laughs> making jokes about the pen because literally that's like, the they stole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Oh, so you kept your, you got your laptop and... Oh, fucking everything, dude. Like, if everything. They, if they, so this is the advice you were saying, like, people would say it was dumb. If someone's trying to rob you, give them your fucking shit. Like, shit is not important. It's all replaceable. Your life is the most important thing. They didn't want my shit. Like they didn't ask for it. They didn't look at my bag. They didn't try to take my phone. They didn't ask for it. They my wanted watch, you. Duct tape, get on the ground. I was like, fuck that. Like I'm not, yeah. Like I would rather fight for my life, for my survival than let some fucking strange motherfuckers who don't speak the same language as me, who were super poor compared to me with fucking guns, submit me to the point they could do anything they want to me at all. Yeah. So like uh, you said, you live in Cali. And after I told my boy this story, he told me about a guy in Cali who did get kidnapped overnight and tortured and managed to escape. So that's a, we'll go track that guy down for you because that sounds like a crazy story. That's Jumped awesome. off a two or three story building, almost broke his legs when the guys went to get food. Like That's a crazy story. So I think a, a, so some manner of preparedness over the years, some expectation for the thing that was possibly going to happen knowing it could happen in this country having a tactical pen everyone's saying they're going to buy one now uh yeah i just i guess it wasn't a conscious decision i just this is what i had to do and i was lucky enough that yeah i mean i can't say i'm special or anything like i would i would not expect to have reacted like this but i'm fucking so glad that i did because it was literally the only out but again it could have gone wrong so many ways like your leg shot an artery or something Exactly. They could have tied me up and then I could have bled out to death because they would have been too scared to know what to do. Exactly. I mean, that's probably the worst case scenario. Okay, so so just tell me how you then managed, like, you know, like, so they, 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 they were obviously struggling with you, right? And at what point do you think they just said, you know what, fuck it? I gotta change beers. Don't worry, even if it gets the background, all of this stuff, because I... I do, I must admit, it's recording. I do like the, um, I do, I do like the, I do like the impromptu kind of stuff where, you know, we're just like discuss, discussing yeah. stuff off camera, but yeah, it kind for of, sure, for sure. kind of like. Oh yeah, by all means, like, I'm not trying to hide anything. You know, just record everything. Uh, right. Well, we're recording now, so <laughs> yeah, you yeah. say go back to where we were. And I was saying why. And we changed locations, by the way. So we've, we've got this wonderful view here. And it's now an evening time. We've got this wonderful view out here by the pool. So, okay. So this is what they were trying to snatch away from you. No, so I think what, like, I came to the realization that my innate fear of powerlessness and being submissive overrides any fear of life or loss of life. Uh, yeah, 100% I would choose to die over being tortured. So it wasn't even that much of a conscious decision as in I just knew what I had to do to get the fuck out. It was a really weird fight. I've been going over and over it again. I know at one stage, he shot around me, he shot me the first, shot at me the first time and we all stopped. And then we kept on fighting. And then he shot at me a couple more times and I guess missed and then he shot me in the arm, which went through. And then another time he shot me in the hip, which I think came out two places in my ass. Do you know what kind of bullets there were? Cause like- Well, I saw a shell, but like from the size of the wounds, there must've been 22s. Like, and if they were nines, I probably would've been completely fucked. Yeah. Mm. 
So when when you got when you you know you know when you felt the the the, the bullets rip through your skin, like I don't know if I felt it. Yo, you the, the adrenaline was pumping. I'm like, thank God for adrenaline because really that just kind of overrode everything else. But I I remember they almost like swapped out a couple of times. I remember I was in the room with one of them and the other guy ran out the front door and came back and the other one ran out and came back. And maybe somewhere along the this time the girl left because I remember her now at one stage coming back, still kind of where the fight started. I've got the little guy in like a headlock and I've got the Supreme pen and I'm kind of stabbing him in the face and head, but not like. Have you got that pen? Is that, is that? Is no, intentionally, anywhere specifically. I'm saying, have you got the pen on you right now? No, I don't. I'll tell you why. Because, like, it's, if you know what you're doing with it, you could really fucking kill someone quite easily. I wasn't trying to kill anyone, but I was also, I guess, pretty fucking mad. Trying to defend yourself. You're you fighting yeah, so for your I'm, life. I'm streaming with blood. He's streaming with blood. The other guy's there with a the gun, like, not doing anything. The girl walks out, and she's like... Dio, Dio, no. So like. Oh, so the girl came back out. So that's the next time I saw her from the first time I saw them. So I'm like shirtless, blood everywhere, fucking shit's wrecked. Dude's bleeding. She walks out. She's screaming, uncle, uncle, no. And I still don't know if she means like she was sad that he was getting fucked up with that. They got it to the stage with me where I was getting for I don't know, probably for him, right? But still, she she obviously wasn't happy about it. Like, uh, which is another strange thing, by the way. Just it was more of the lead up to the story. I told her I trained like martial arts and guns. And she said I was like really big and talking about like, I look like a fit. I'm like, well, I work out. Do you want to come into the MMA gym with me? So it's like. Why would she? If you're gonna choose someone to fucking kidnap, why choose like the dude who? I know, but <laughs> sounds is, like on know, paper but, he's probably not the best option. We're not some fat old guy. Th this is the thing, right? Like, because sometimes these people, these um, they just they're opportunists. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is, right? Because they know exactly, like, okay, this guy, he's like this. He's really like not just you. I'm saying even I've had incidences with myself where. You, you tell a person, you tell a woman, you tell a guy, a Colombian, hey, this is what I'm really like. Mm. And they still want to try. They still right. want to, you know, they still want to see if you're really about that life. <laughs> you understand? Like, okay, they see, for instance, that um, in a situation, for instance, okay, I tell a girl, listen, like, if someone steals from me, listen, it's not going to end up well for them. Blah, 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 blah. I actually do find them. I live over here. I'm not just here on vacation. And then they well, you speak Spanish, right? Yeah, I speak Spanish. Yeah. But they still try. It does in their mind. In their mind, I am gringo. Gringo. Yeah. <laughs> in their mind, I am a gringo. So anyway, going back to your story. So the girl comes out. She goes tio tio, which means uncle. No, uncle. Tio tio. No like, tio. tio no tio no. So who fucking knows? That that is the last time I remember seeing her. I think I lose the pen. He grabs the pen. I start trying to do a, like a rear naked choke with blood everywhere. Doesn't work. Slip over. I think maybe you've broken the glass table by this time. So there's glass everywhere. Then I try and do a triangle, which I'm worse at and is even harder. Just, I don't know. But I think just the fact the whole time I was wrestling with him, keeping him in front of me was probably a good thing compared to the other guy with the gun, him not really knowing what to do. So when you were wrestling with the guy, like you kind of, had him, he was almost like a shield for you. So the guy with the gun couldn't. Yeah, pretty much the whole time I tried right. to keep it like that. So he didn't want to risk possibly shooting his. Whenever he did shoot, it was like right up, like so close that if he'd done it to my head, I'd be dead. Right. So it seemed also, I didn't ever get the impression they were trying to kill me. Like they, they were trying to do what they wanted to do. And I was like, you're not going to do that. But we both had a very clear pass and Maybe it could have gone, I don't know, it could have gone wrong if I'd fucked them up more, I guess. But, so at that stage, fall on the ground, jiu-jitsu's not working for me. <sighs> I managed to pop back up, and then I just start, like, everything that's not tied down. So I, like, throw the table at them, all the chairs, using the chairs to, like, hit them and push them back more into the living room. They got the chair at me, they hit me with the chair, I had, like, a full scruff. My mate thought maybe my ribs were broken, but they weren't. I just had like the full square mark of the chair there. Um, 
So I get them into the living room. And this is the weird thing as well. I think the fight stopped again. I just bought these uh, Air Force One Fresh 07, which is like the all leather, they're supposed to never crease. But I've worn them like motorbiking and horse riding. So they, they were kind of a bit fucked up before the fight. One came off during the fight. There's I think the big guy with the gun there standing near the door trying to stop me getting out. And he was, I just like walk over, pick up the shoe, looking at him, put it on, put it on the sofa, do up the laces. Oh, and before that happened, after the wrestling bit, I remember just like there, just like bending over, like breathing hard. Going, oh, this is why there's rounds in fights. Cause we need a fucking break. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm old, I live at sea level, even like walking upstairs here cause we're a bit elevated, I get out of breath and I've been partying hard. So I think it was really clear then that they didn't want to kill you, right? Mm. They wanted to like, they wanted to kidnap you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, because in, if you're taking breaks in between, then <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they're trying to grab you. They're trying to yeah, they were trying to, you know, dominate. So, and, they, and they thought they thought essentially that you're going to be compliant. Yeah, I think they just thought the guns would win scare it. Scare you, yeah. Which it, which it would, but for any regular normal... It should. It definitely should. Guns are fucking scary, scary things. Thing, they yeah. kill very easily. Okay. Even even 22s up close. Like, yeah, it's... If someone wanted to kill you with that, you'd be very dead very quickly. And it's ironic that they were already in the apartment well, waiting, so... I mean, I guess she had been messaging and telling them that I was coming. They were all prepped and ready. Like, that was their trap house, 100%. I'm sure they just paid for it in cash. Her number stopped working right away. Like, I messaged, so I guess we're not going to go out again. Have you got any pictures of her? Or? Yeah, I'll post them on the Reddit thing. I'll, I can, yeah, can, 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 you, can, you, yeah, can you send it to, to me? And So, again, the fight is, like, on and off. I've managed to recover my shoe, but I'm still, like, covered in blood. It's shirtless. Shirt's on my head. I think the other guy, the little guy maybe came back again. And then I started grabbing like everything. Like I think I got the TV and hit him and threw it, threw it at him and just everything that wasn't tied down, I just started using as a weapon. But by this time I'm in the living room and he's gonna kind of push back up against the door almost cause I'm throwing so much shit at them. And then I just immediately like grabbed the, the curtains, the blinds. Uh, so I, I, you know, I ripped down the blinds and then we're street level and the, the Hamburg shop with all these people is directly across the road and people are looking at us and there's people just walking by as well. And I mean, I'm sure they saw the big Louis Blanco gringo come in like I stand out wherever I go here, right? Uh, and they must have heard the commotion. There's multiple gunshots and everything's getting broken. Obviously they don't want to get involved, like it's not their business. Fair enough. Uh, but as soon as they, like it's there, I was like this big half naked, covered in blood and tattoos dude in a destroyed apartment and two guys no longer have masks on because we've been fighting both with guns. They just kind of do like a classic, I don't know, like look at the people, look at each other and they just bounce. Did they go off in a, in the, in a bike or in a car or? No, so they, I remember one guy was gone and I can, I can remember the big guy struggling with the outside gate and I, I went to pick up a pot plant and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash it over his head. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll probably get shot. It's like, I'll throw it at his head. Not realizing really, I think that I've been shot in the arm. So I, my thought of throwing it at his head, it just like fell weakly at the ground by his feet. And he like, looked at me and then he, they just, just ran. Like there's no bikes or anything. I mean, they probably live in Berlin and have their spot somewhere else they could get to easily, right? Yeah. Cause, and then after that, you didn't see the girls. The, everybody had basically just left. Um, I immediately grabbed my bag, which I was surprised was still there, and went straight across the road to the hamburger shop and said, you know, Felicia, Banditos, Ambulancia, blah, 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 and just, they gave me some water and I just sat there like, trying to like patch myself up with tissues and clothes. Uh. <laughs> Tú no tienes cámara, cámara. Cámara? Sí. No. No mi casa. Es uh, es es casa o bendito's casa. No mi casa. Vamos, Rodrigo, para la tienda, vamos. 
Amiga, ¿no este? Amigos. Quiero ver a mí. Vamos, que te digo un verdad que te gusta que no te dejaste robar. Mi estilo. Acá tiene que venir, sí, sí. Salga para que. 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 Para este. ¿Qué pasó, men? ¿Qué pasó? No. ¿Qué busca? Ok, ok. Vamos, vamos, vamos para que te atienda. Vamos, mira el bolso. Llévatelo. Vamos a llevarte más aquí. Y luego los cops vinieron. Creo que fue cops de And then they're out with guns going and checking the building. Then they ask me to go in. So I go in with the sole purpose to find my fucking Supreme pen, which I also know during the fight the cap came off. So I'm looking for both the pen and the cap, and I'm moving everything that's broken and kicking it, and I'm filming it at the same time. Have, I, have you got the actual footage yeah, of all yeah, that I, stuff? Yeah, I can send you that as well. Um, I had like maybe fucking 80 mil. I had like no cash on me. When I have a $800 watch, a $1,000 phone, a $3,000 laptop, I was like, if they tried to rob me, they would have got so much shit. I had less, way less than that in my bank account. It like, wouldn't have even been worth it. But uh, they took, the money was gone. So I guess somewhere they had enough time to consciously go, oh, well, this isn't working out. Let's get 80 mil. <laughs> but the motherfuckers took my pen. So that's why I don't have the pen, because that was literally the only thing they stole from me. Right. Yeah. So... You said you and the police, you and the police went back to the apartment. You're looking for your pen, right? After that, what happened next? I mean, I just kept on saying hospital, hospital, dad. They chucked me in the back of the police car and I just lay down because I was fucked up and, you know, shock, adrenaline, bleeding from like six holes in my body. I probably can cost, uh, I had to like brace myself. So I'm not even seeing where we're going and they're driving fast with sirens and it's like it's swaying loads. So Right. So the 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 account from your 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 guy, your friend, he said that they took you to a hospital and the first hospital was kind of shit. So this is the closest hospital. This is like the main hospital in Berlin and I was not really of any kind of state of mind to be paying attention other than to get in get checked in as soon as possible, give them my ID so they could get me some attention. For some weird reason, I started getting like crazy ass hay fever. They did not leave for like 24 hours. As soon as I went to that hospital, I was basically allergic to that hospital. And I go, eventually go see the nurse and I think she gives me one piece of gauze for like I'm bleeding like multiple places. I'm leaving a pool of blood everywhere I sit just because I'm bleeding out my ass. And she put a bit of gauze on my arm. <laughs> and then I went back in the waiting room and I was just like out of it. When like my mate said he's coming, I was like, cool, I'm just waiting for you. That's all I'm doing. Trying to get water and stuff. Some Colombian chick starts talking to me, like trying her English and stuff. And I don't know, I was there for like maybe an hour. My friend comes, he grabs me like a... Then you guys went to a, a second hospital. Yeah, but so... <laughs> I don't know if he said it and they, they repeated it or they said it and he again came and said the same thing, but they were like, he's like, we should go to a different hospital. They're like, yeah, you should go to a different hospital. I was like, cool, just someone sort it out because I wasn't really, by that stage, really able to, like with the so adrenaline for, wearing so, off so, with the shock. So at what time of the day, what time of the day did this uh, I sent a video, I was across the road at the Hamburg shop bleeding. That video I sent like 1.30 p.m. That was maybe three, I think. So from when you, um, from, from when they attempted to kidnap you to when you left, the, that was two hours. I, am I getting the story wrong, right? Because your friend said you guys went to... I was basically the, bleeding the for five hours. I, it, was, it was 
the police came and did whatever they did. I'm not sure how long that took, or it took them to get me to the hospital, but say I sent the video at 1.30, I'm definitely at the other hospital by two. It took Phil at least an hour, so the earliest we're out of there is 3 p.m. Right. So we're just bleeding the whole time. He looks at the best hospital in Poblado, we go to that. He's like, we're both feeling bad for the taxi driver, because I'm, like, I'm gonna leave a lot of blood in your car. Put my shirt down to bleed on that instead. They get selfies the whole time. <laughs> Like, I don't know why I'm getting energy halfway through to do this, but it seemed funny to me at the time. Uh, we get to the next hospital check-in, and this is a nice looking hospital. I'm like, it made me feel better already, but by this time, I guess I'm still bleeding, right? So, and I hadn't eaten that day. I was like fasting, just had the coffee. So I'm either feeling like I'm gonna pass out or throw up and leaving trail blood. And then they finally get to see me and they're like, well, these are all the stages and levels of the cost of how much it is, and we can explain to them. I was like, just do the expensive one, the quickest one, let's just go. Uh, so as I think you heard that story from Phil, did you? You heard the rec audio recording? Bear yeah. with me a second. Just trying to sort out the light over here. <laughs> but yeah, we were basically in that hospital for another three hours. Uh, We're trying to we're trying to sort out the lighting. I think is it? Do you, I think that's perfect? Uh, do, you, do you still get any background? Like, is the background blown out, or is it is it nice? Yeah, your face is blurring out. Uh, I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> your, your your face is blurring out, or maybe it could be because I'm staring too much into. Right. Like, Everything's blurry to me right now. Anyway. Right. So, so go on. on. Mm. Go ahead. Let's continue. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Uh, yeah, so we're at the, the good hospital, and I guess it takes maybe another three hours to, yeah, like, we agree to just pay the biggest one, whatever, quickest, let's do it. Uh, I don't know how much longer it took after that, but I know there was a lot of waiting, and then they did maybe five x-rays and one or two CT scans, and that was three hours in total. <laughs> And then finally they came, someone to Lake, patched me up and saw me bleeding. Prior to that, they had someone follow me around with a mop. Yeah, and, with a, like a, a cleanup right, bucket right, and mopping up blood after me. I was like, why are you missing no patch this shit? I'm pretty sure it doesn't affect that x-ray. Uh, yeah, so that was super fun. Um, okay, so check this out, right? So I'm here yesterday in Poblado, right? Time's about 1 a.m., I think. <laughs> right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I've got work, right? Because I'm on London time. I've got work. And then I bump into this guy. He's six foot two or something with tons of tattoos. He's sitting right now in front of me. But I meet him yesterday. He's having the greatest time of his life. He looks as if he's been drinking. <laughs> I have been drinking. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, hang on a second. Wasn't this guy just like almost kidnapped, like a couple of weeks, like about 10 days ago. Why are you still here? Like most normal, <laughs> if most, most normal people who are rational, who are thinking, would have been like, you know what, fuck it. Th this was close. Why, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the country, I'm leaving Colombia. Why are you still here in Colombia? That is a very valid and legitimate question that a lot of my friends ask me. Uh, because, I mean, I love it here, man. This is like one of the best cities you'll ever come to in your entire life. Uh, it's got everything I love, and I still think about moving here. Um, I'm a, I am aware of the dangers. I, I know that is a literal possibility. I have heard the stories. I've heard about, you know, that Vietnamese-American guy who died from the girls over scope meeting him. Like, I know uh, I was staying at Seoul, and two guys got scope me in there. And they have a security desk that checks everyone in. They wouldn't even let our Canadian-Colombian friend who is... Like, she looks Colombian, but she's very much Canadian, right? Like, but eventually they did. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I was stupid. I, I, I put a post on uh, Reddit, which apparently got taken down by the mods. It was respectful. It wasn't shitting on anyone or the country. Uh, yeah. Uh, I did all the wrong things. Like, there were so many red flags. So, but my point is, you know, this is a great country. You know, we enjoy it over here but you've just been through something which is like really traumatic yeah. for most people. Yeah. 
And, I mean, and, and, and let, let's be fair. Look, look at the view here. This is, this is Medellin. This is Pablo Escobar's city. Right, so, so I'm on the 15th floor up there, and like the lightning storms, you see, yeah, yeah, there, I, yeah, I saw the lightning, like yeah. flashing. Yeah, I saw the lightning. It's storms. so dope. Right, so why are you not scared? Like, you know, like how I recognize you on the street. Are you not scared that these people could like recognize you? Like, you know, you you probably injured one of them, and they could like want to take retaliation on you I, or something. I've thought about that. I think they'd probably be more scared of getting caught. I, I have actually gone out a couple of times to the same place and met that girl, but I don't think she'd be that stupid to go there again because... Does she probably think that you left back to... Well, that's what home? I think. I was like, one, I'm wondering if eventually she will go back there, which is another reason why I was like posting photos of her on Reddit, which is the same photos I gave to the police. But, I mean, the police is like a whole other thing that probably should be discussed as well. Uh, but, yeah, so is, why did I stay here? I mean... I know what not to do. And that was just a very, very strong reminder of things I already know that I've warned a ton of other guys I've met who've just come here for the first time. Like, like you, you don't go to girls' houses. You bring them to your place. You have control of the environment, of your drinks. You don't leave drinks unattended. Uh, like, you need to have security and check people in with ID. And uh, some people go to the extreme of, like, taking the girl's phone and locking it in their safe. I would, like, double lock my guest in and then hide the key, lock the key in the safe and always, even if I know them and trust them, probably still always have my fresh beer with me everywhere I go into the toilet. Like, I'm just usually over, overly cautious and I just conned myself or she was really good. There was so many layers of like not being in any way suggestive or sexual and having what apparently seemed like connections of liking the same shit. I don't know if I gave stuff away or she just picked up on it or it's just a good guess. Gringo's here, like me, like the gym and like coffee, right? That's not uh, probably a hard thing to guess and say you like it too. Uh, the dog, her went to come to the gym. I don't know. I just looked like I was a, definitely a fucking idiot. I mean, how, how many, I know the Colombians with dogs, but I mean, it does seem kind of, I mean, if I, if I met a female with a dog, right? I'll be quite trusting of her, to be fair. Right? <laughs> yes. I'll be quite trusting of her. <laughs> like, if I met a female walking a dog anywhere in the world, I'll be like, this is actually a really decent person. They've got some kind of like a... And it was a cute-ass dog as well. Uh, that's a funny thing. I, I put in the Reddit post the picture of her with the dog when the guy said, oh, I would have been like right away with the nails. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, look at the dog's nails. They're unclipped and they're like super... But the dog's nails. Yeah, and I was like, fuck, you're right. That's not like someone who really looks after a dog. Hmm. Hmm. Especially if she's like a nail technician, she should be aware of the dog's nails, right? Yeah, probably, probably the dog was part of the act. I mean, they just borrowed it from someone. Yeah. Walking the dog and then... That kind of dog, like that kind of pure so breed. So where, where, did, you, where probably... did you meet her? You met her in Provenza, right? Uh, yeah, outside Vin Trash on Carrera 20, I think, 35. Right, so she's walking the dog, innocently. No, no, that was, no, no, no she brought the dog to the coffee. Right, that, that was the second her, I, I didn't meet her with the right. dog, no, yeah. Okay. But the dog kind of just, like, put me at ease. I was like... She's a sweet girl. Yeah, she's <laughs> talking about the dog, and she acts like all these girls I know who are, like, really into dogs, who like <laughs> dogs more than people. So maybe she likes dogs more than people. So... Did she speak uh, English or? Yeah, she spoke pretty good English, yeah. Like, which I think also helps, right? Because I'm just like trying to, I'm not even like, okay, if I meet a girl, just the fact that she speaks English is cool. Maybe I can make a cool friend. Maybe I'm not going to like date her or hook up with her, but I'm sure she has friends. Just trying to create a social circle and like, you know, build some kind of network with just people. Because I, for the most part, Colombian people are super cool, super fun, super nice, super friendly, generous, like. That's another reason I love this place. I love this city specifically for the climate, but I'm into, you know, hip hop, skateboarding, graffiti, weed, like all the shit this city has. All the hip hop This country stuff. has. <laughs> uh, but even like reggaeton now, like the new school reggaeton is like 90s hip hop. It's all just like flexing in cars and hot girls and Jordans. And it's like, yeah, it's yeah, all the yeah. shit I love. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, even something that surprised me is, uh, you know, the Mexican kind of, um, I forgot on what they're called, rancheros. It's, it's, oh. uh, it's, it's like where, you know, I, I don't want to like mimic the beat, but they, it's like the, the, 
It's like the old school Mexican type of uh, the guys who walk around with the yeah, yeah, but they cool, but, but yeah, but now the youths are doing that, right? Well, they are. There's this one called like a, like a new school. Yeah, style. yeah. So they're doing the old school type of stuff. I'll, I'll put it in the clip, right? Okay. They're doing the old school kind of stuff, but they've all got the blings and everything, oh, and, yeah? and they get they get millions and millions of views, oh, hundreds so I've not of heard millions of, that. of views. I've not heard of right. That. So it's really big now in Mexico. So it's like the culture now and everything. Anyway, we're, we're well, like also you saying why I didn't leave because I love this city for so many reasons, like the food culture, the bar culture. I know I did the wrong thing. I didn't feel particularly mentally trauma traumatized, but I definitely really fucking sore. And the thought of like packing my bags or getting on a plane with a bunch of people and touching things, like I was basically just lying. I have been lying on this side for like two weeks. Uh, yeah, so I was very uncomfortable. They didn't give me proper painkillers. They said take a acetaminophen and vitamin C. Asked for antibiotics. They didn't give me any. She got infected, so I had to go back to the hospital a week later. And yeah, get antibiotics, which is a three hours for antibiotics. But during this time, I started self-medicating with some um, like low milligram oxys, which I just watched painkiller. So I was like, is this a good idea? And yeah, they didn't really do too much. Kind of helped a little bit, but. I don't have an addictive personality. And apparently these ones are like the slow release. So it yeah. doesn't really, it's not like the ones in the documentary or the Netflix series. But uh, yeah, man, like I don't really paid for a place. It's super cheap here. I live in the most expensive country in the world, which is hot and humid. So I just be there having to drive my car to the supermarket to pay hundreds of dollars for a couple of bags of groceries. Or, uh, and it's, it's like super hot. It's like, it's like the coast. It's Caribbean, right? So it's the same as Cartagena or any of those places. So another reason I like it here is just because it's just nice, like I'm chill. So for me, this just seemed like the best idea to stay here, stay at the places that I know are safe. Don't go off with strange girls. Don't go to anywhere I don't know. Uh, and yeah, just enjoy what I love about the city. So I, I guess that's, that was how I was going to wrap it, wrap it up. I was going to say, what advice can you give people? But you've already, you know, over and over in this conversation, you know, said, um, you know, that you've made the mistakes and, You've also mentioned how you're aware of how to avoid these mistakes. And if, for people who've been listening, they know obviously, okay, not to do this, but especially people who are new to, new to, um, to, to Colombia. Um, I'm trying to think if there's but any... It comes down to what your mom told you. Don't trust strangers, right? <laughs> exactly. I was like, that's the best rule. I mean, I guess I just thought I got too old. I forgot that rule, but yeah. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other further questions before I ask you other stuff not related to this um because we're late i know no 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 we, we got time we got uh, but I, i'm just trying to think on, on this topic if there's anything else um i mean I'll, I'll, i mean are, are you still with with everything that's happened I, I know i saw you out on the street last night right are you still trustworthy of these chicas here these women over here like you know because I'm I definitely, mean, I'm definitely much more cautious than I, and I was already cautious enough for the kind of girls I would talk to, but it's definitely made me take a step back and like any girl, like I was talking to a girl who's like, come meet me. And I was like, I told you some girl tried to kidnap me. Like, I'm going to meet you in a mall in the daytime. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been filtering through, still trying to be on dating apps. So you bored. using Tinder? Yeah. Tinder's pretty shit here, I would say. More bumble, but even then, that doesn't seem that great. I don't know. I just I hate dating apps. They don't really work for me, and I find Colombian girls pretty hard work. Yeah, they can be. Can be. Okay, listen. Thank you very much for your time and uh, help. Well, not help, but for sharing the information mm. uh, this afternoon and now this evening, night time. Um, hopefully, this is a tell for people to be aware of you know the dangers of not listening to mum's advice and following strangers back home, uh, especially cute girls who are walking dogs uh, in Provenza, in Colombia, Medellin. Fuck yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, the audience and the people who watch this would, you know, find this really informative and there are going to be lessons learned. Um, listen, I wish you all the best. Take care of yourself. Be, you know, real careful, cautious in future and, and live your best life, man. So I'm trying to do, man. Yeah, I think it was like one of those kind of wake up calls that you, you know, we don't appreciate what we have enough and you'd lose it in any fucking second. So while not being an idiot, making bad decisions, try to just make as many good decisions for yourself, I guess.